uh, in today's video, we will simulate the phenomenon of planar pose flow and validate it with analytical results. Uh, we'll start with basic concepts like what's meant by a planar pose flow um, and its characteristic relations. Uh, similar to our previous video, we will then look at the problem definition, followed by a brief description of the governing differential equations and necessary assumptions, and then move on to the actual simulation. Uh, ultimately, we will conclude with the result analysis, wherein the simulated result will be validated against the analytical result. A planar plaza flow occurs when a fluid is made to pass in between two stationary plates. Here, the plates are characterized by being infinitely wide, which makes the gradient very small in the direction of the width. As the gradient is very small, it can be neglected, thus essentially making it a 2D flow. Shear as well, the, the Reynolds number and uh, its characteristics are the same as that discussed for laminar flow through pipe. Um, similar to flow through a pipe, the velocity profile is uniform at the inlet, but due to viscous effects and boundary layer phenomenon, it starts to, to develop until the hydrodynamic entry line, after which it is fully developed. Um, the hydrodynamic entry length is the same as the hydrodynamic entry for uh, laminar flow through the pipe. The maximum velocity achieved by the fluid during laminar flow is one and a half times the average velocity. The fully developed flow profile is given by the formula uh, shown on the screen in the middle. We will now have a brief discussion about the governing equations which describe the planar passe flow. Similar to laminar flow through the pipe, we have assumed the flow to be steady, viscous, fully developed laminar, and with its properties being constant. Additionally, the pressure gradient across the gap between plates is considered to be zero. And as mentioned previously, the width of the plates is uh, more than the distance between the plates. By observation, we can see that the uh, fully developed velocity profile has a maxima at the center uh, which means the derivative must be zero, and at the wall, the velocity is uh, zero due to no-slip conditions by integrating the differential equation twice and uh, applying the previously mentioned boundary conditions. We can find out the relation which gives the variation of velocity in longitudinal direction. Uh, the followings are the plate dimensions and the fluid properties to be considered for the simulation. Special care should be taken that the length of the plates is greater than the hydrodynamic entry length. The following values are calculated by using the analytical relations provided for planar poise flow. The first step is to set up the fluent project by dragging the fluent into the workbench. Then click on Geometry and open Design Modeler. Create the geometry as shown with appropriate dimensions. Note change the body to fluid from solid. And don't forget to click generate before closing. Um, now open the mesh by double clicking the mesh option in the workbench and selecting the mesh.
apply edge sizing to the inlet and outlet with a number of divisions as shown. Set the behavior to hard so as to enforce the meshing scheme. Similar to adding inflation in the case of pipe flow here, we will add bias to accurately capture the velocity profile near the walls. Similarly, add edge sizing to walls. and use face meshing to set the meshing method. Uh, we will be using the a default meshing method, which is quadrilaterals. Create the mesh by clicking generate. and give a, a, a meme selection as shown inlet, outlet, and wall. After all the steps, click on mesh and click update so that the mesh data is transferred to Fluent, which enables it to read upstream data. Now open Fluent and click double precision. Um, after Fluent is fully opened, carry out the standard procedure of using the scale option and checking the mesh using check mesh. In errors uh, similar to the video of laminar flow through pipes, we will use a pressure based solver under steady state conditions with a laminar model with fluid properties um, as shown. Again, care should be taken that in the cell zone condition. Edit the material name and change it to water liquid. Add the appropriate boundary conditions to the inlet and wall as per the problem definition. Um, now click on the initialization tab and select hybrid initialization. Create a new surface report definition with the report type as facet maximum for velocity magnitude and select outlet as this can also be used for checking the results. Now click run calculation with the maximum iteration set to desired value and click on calculate. After calculation, do post processing of data to obtain necessary results for validation like velocity profile, um, entry length graph and other uh, parameters as shown uh, to plot the velocity at the center of the pipe create the line using the line and rake tool from surfaces and give appropriate coordinates to
also generate a line at the start of the developed region for checking the pressure using the appropriate coordinates. To plot the contour of velocity, a plane must be created in the required direction. Now plot the result as shown in the video uh, to plot the center line velocity, which is used to verify the entry length go to XY, plot set X axis 1, and select velocity magnitude and write them in the required folder, which can be plotted in Excel. And similar steps are required for the plotting of the velocity profile. Um, but in the XY plot, change the plot direction to Y as one, and the rest is zero. Um, save the file to a folder For the pressure drop, calculate using surface integral um, that select the area weighted average and select static pressure. Similarly, calculate the wall shear stress using wall fluxes. The following are the results obtained from the simulation carried out on Fluent. The left figure represents the fully developed parabolic velocity profile that is formed at the outlet. The profile also matches the theoretical profile of laminar flow. The figure on the right represents the variation of the fluid velocity at the center of the gap between the plates over the entire length of the plates. And then we can observe that right around the theoretical entry length, the velocity starts to become stable with no further variations. By comparing the analytical and simulated results, uh, we can observe that the findings are within the acceptable error ranges. Did you think about the changes that would occur in flow physics if the parallel plates are arranged vertically? What do you think would be the changes in velocity profile for high Reynolds number? The following are the references used in this video. And for more information about the Bevermin uh, differential equations and their derivation, the following books can be used. That's all for today's video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and we will meet in the next video.